Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Ninjago video here on the channel. My name is Tanner Fishies. In today's video, we are going to be discussing set number 71794, Lloyd and Aaron's Ninja Team Max. Retailing for $80 USD and containing 764 pieces, this is my very late review of this set. Now, I just recently got this set uh, not too long ago, maybe like three weeks ago at this point, as of the time of filming, and I was originally going to pass on this set just just because I wasn't super fond of how it looked, but I decided to take a chance and buy it on a whim. I think this set has some good things, but it also has some stupid things, ultimately making it a very mixed bag. But in today's video, I just want to give my overall thoughts on this set as honestly and openly as possible. For the box, here we have the front of the box. It is the front of the box. And for the back of the box, well, it's the back of the box. That is very much the back of the box. That's the back of the box. So starting off with minifigures, here we have Dragons Rising Lloyd and all of these figures we've looked at in previous reviews, so I don't want to spend too much time on them. This is the same Dragons Rising Lloyd that you get in the other sets. Nothing too new about this guy, though like I've always said, this design isn't half bad. Next up we have Aaron, which does make sense considering the fact that this set is supposed to be a Lloyd and Aaron team up set. And Aaron here doesn't look too bad either. We've already talked about this minifigure year two in countless videos so I'm not going to say too much about him uh, I don't really have any new thoughts regarding this figure but I do still like it I think the horns on the helmet are also a rather nice touch I don't know he's just a cool figure not much else to say about this guy either next up we have Raptin a character who we've also talked about before on the channel uh, very cool minifigure though still love his orange Imperium sword uh, really happy to get more of those I love that piece the Imperium sword is just a fantastic part in my opinion but overall same old wrapped in nothing too new about this guy either next up we have the imperium guard commander a very straightforward imperium foot soldier same staff that we've seen before as well and uh, overall these imperium guys aren't too bad i wouldn't mind army building with these things maybe one day i will make an entire imperium army who's to say next up we have the imperium claw general as my cat waffle walks throughout the background hello waffle uh but this guy again very generic imperium foot soldier again one of those swords though so nice. I love that piece so much. I also enjoy the helmets on these Imperium guys specifically. These Imperium uh, bug-shaped helmet things. I like those a lot. I think those are pretty cool helmets. Uh, but overall, the Imperium Claw General, yeah, he's all right. Uh, again, just another foot soldier for the Imperium army. And so with no side builds to speak of, we are going to be moving on to the main meat and potatoes of this set. That, of course, being the Ninja Team Mech itself. Maybe, does this mech have a name? I guess we'll find out in the show. Uh, don't mind my cat waffle. She will just be exploring. Uh, but overall, this mech is pretty tall. Uh, yeah, very tall mech. It's hard for me to get the entire thing in frame. Um, oh, oh, oh. I think Waffle likes the mech. What do you think, Waffle? Is that a win? I think she's just looking for something to snack on. Uh, but anywho. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> oh, Waffle. So yeah, like I was saying, the mech itself is rather large, and in order to fit both Aaron and Lloyd in the mech, it's actually rather simple. So as I'm sure you guys can tell, the mech itself is actually two mechs. One of them just kind of sits in the front like a little baby, that of course being Aaron's mech right there. And to fit Aaron in his mech, you just push this thing down, and you just gotta stand Aaron back in there, like so... Yeah, there we go, and then you can just close that up and call it good from there. And then Lloyd just kind of sits back there behind him, so it's not the best look ever, I'd say, and the mech itself, once it's all assembled, it does fall apart a lot, I will say. The entire mech is rather finicky. You can adjust some stuff, like this hat thing you can pose every which way that you want, but sometimes that gets misaligned easily and it looks pretty stupid. Uh, but yeah, overall, with this mech, uh, you can pose various things. These things can move. Uh, these things are on ball joints, sure. These things can move any which way you want. These weird shoulder cover things, which I do think are rather nice. They're not the most sturdy things out there either. Uh, that one just kind of fell on its own. Uh, these stickers are pretty nice too. Th these are stickers, unfortunately, um, but they do look good, I'd say, and it does make for some interesting looks with the thing if you want to pose it around any which way that you want. Um, moving on down a little bit to the Aaron mech attachment thing. 
I'm not even sure how I'm even going to begin to talk about this thing. Uh, it kind of connects like a baby. Like I said, it's kind of like a baby carriage thing. In order to disconnect Aaron's mech from Lloyd's mech, you got to hope and pray that the thing doesn't fall apart. But it's basically just clipped on there with a little Technic axle. So you just remove that. Uh, the feet of the Aaron mech, when they're folded up, they will slide in these slots on the knees on the Lloyd mech. So... I guess that's how you do it, but then you're left with this, which doesn't look too bad, I must say. Uh, I've seen some people complain about how skinny this looks or how incomplete it looks. I don't know. I think it doesn't look all that bad. I mean, it still kind of looks like a super skinny mech, but I like how it's angled. It does have like an ab crunch too with the articulation. So you can move that around if that helps you get some better angles. I don't think that looks completely terrible though. Um, I just feel like it needs uh, some type of chest piece that'll plug in right there. That'll kind of complete the look. Uh, you also have these dangly chains for some reason, don't know why. Uh, but just finishing up talking about Lloyd's mech, let's get these shoulder things out of the way so we can talk more about articulation. You can fold it behind the mech if you want to, but that looks kind of stupid. Uh, it's got elbows. Thank goodness, elbows are here. The arms can be splayed out if you want. Those are on ratchety joints too. Very, very cool. We already talked about the waist uh, ab crunch thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, it also has this gigantic stick thing for a weapon. It's kind of obnoxious to move around. Let's get that out super quick. Just kind of attaches to the mech using a, uh, or using a Technic axle. So the cheater method, it also has this weird floppy thing on the end of it. So nice stick, bro. But ultimately, I'm not going to bother with that for the rest of this video, I'd say. Um, it does have some hands, as you can see. The hands do move independently from the arm. So you have a separate arm joint right there, and the hand moves independently from that. The hand also has... Uh, four fingers, each of them individually articulated, and a thumb. So that's pretty cool, actually. So you can get some pretty funny uh, poses out of this guy if you really want. You can make him flip the bird to Imperium, which is always imperative when it comes to these Lego mechs. You got to make sure they can flip you off, right? That's, that's, that's very important. You also have some stickers right here. Same deal on the other side. Uh, yeah, the main deal with the stickers, though, I'm going to keep it like that. I don't care. Uh, the main deal with the stickers, the main place where you have them is on this cape thing, which kind of wraps around the body like so. It's very finicky and very awkward. So I don't know. You can just do whatever you want with that. Uh, the legs really quick. Let's talk about the legs for this guy. So the legs are actually built up rather nicely. And fortunately, there is some good articulation here. First of all, kicking. Yep. Awesome kick. And also knees. Yes. Good. Every Ninjago mech, every Lego mech should have knees. That should be the golden standard. Uh, they use the Samurai X mech method with the ball joints and the socket pieces that were used on Bionicle, Hero Factory. So that's a nice method. Glad to see that return. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. The feet are also something that a lot of people have been talking about. A lot of people don't like how the mech is practically wearing sandals. And my big gripe with it isn't the design. The design is whatever. There are no uh, friction rubber stopper things on the bottom of the feet and as such the mech especially when it's all hooked up with Aaron's mech it slides around a lot and tends to fall over a little bit easier a lot of Ninjago mechs have been adding these orange friction stopper things to the bottom of the feet this mech can't really do that because of how the feet are designed so expect this thing to flop around a lot it does have some good articulation though you can go side to side ankle tilted or whatever forward and back is kind of limited because of these pieces which are just meant to uh, you know to stabilize the entire thing and prevent it from falling over but this thing is already pretty top heavy as it is so and like I said earlier Aaron's mech when it attaches it attaches right there and the feet get tucked into these things right here which some people might find to be pretty obnoxious in terms of a design I don't think it's that bad to be honest with you I'm just glad that the thing has decent articulation especially the knee bend that's amazing I love that a lot actually but in terms of other aspects about this mech I mean the colors are just kind of you know whatever dark green and gold is always a fantastic color combination doesn't really match with Lloyd for this season though and I suppose the figure does have some dark green on him but I think the bright green kind of clashes with the dark green doesn't really make this mech unified to its owner uh, but still I think the color scheme is awesome I love the dark green and the gold and even the little bits of red throughout the mech I don't mind how this looks overall 
Um, I do think it could have been a little bit better in terms of like uh, stability. That's my biggest issue with this mech. But design-wise, I don't think it's all that bad. I don't really care for these wrap things, like I said, but... I don't know, I guess this is supposed to be the completed look. All it truly needs is something to cover the chest. And I guess you can kind of cover it with these things. And I guess that's not a bad look, but, uh, you know, all in all, it's an okay mech. Uh, the weapon is also just kind of whatever, too. I like the stickers. I think that overall, the mech itself is a pretty decent design. Um, probably not everybody's cup of tea, but I don't think it's all that bad. I actually think it's quite good when you get down to the details but as a unit it is kind of finicky and unstable and i think that's what's holding it back truly from being a good ninjago mech at least in my opinion so now let's talk about aaron's mech the mini aaron mech that connects to the lloyd mech this thing right here is basically a glorified ninjago core mech they could have easily sold this on its own as a separate mech granted they might want to you know, clean up the back a little bit. That looks kind of dumb, but that's just so it can attach to, uh, to the Big Mac. Uh, but overall, yeah, this is essentially just your standard Ninjago core mech. In fact, those are the Ninjago core joints in dark gray. Uh, pretty sure the legs use those as well. Yep, we've seen these armor pieces used on core mechs and other small Lego mechs. These things are kind of like the knee pads now. The chest is actually made up of a dragon head. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but that is just a printed dragon head right there. Uh, printed. Very good printing right there. That piece is also printed, but then again, that piece just comes out of Ninjago Core, so, you know, it's whatever. Uh, but you can adjust this. Aaron sits in there rather snugly. Um, but yeah, overall, this is just your standard Core mech. Uh, even with the hands, those hands are built relatively the same way as other core mechs that we've seen. Uh, the mech does wield two blades, so I guess that's something. And ankles, you can also move those around, ball joints or whatever. That's really the only form of articulation this mech has, uh, as well as like the shoulders or whatever, of course. But, uh, you know, if you like core mechs, you're probably going to like this thing. If you don't like core mechs, this thing will probably be the bane of your existence. I don't think it's that bad, but I feel like maybe they could have tried a little bit harder. And especially with like the over abundance of mechs that we're supposed to be getting for 2024 ninjago i feel like they're all gonna look like this and this design it, it, it's fine but it does get old after a while the same basic skeleton is still the same thing and i'm not really sure if i enjoy that i'm not sure if i want to see more of that uh but as it stands you know mini aaron mech it's whatever i suppose here's the mini mech compared to lloyd just so you can see how big the mech is compared to someone who's not driving it. And really quick before we wrap up, here we have the spent sticker sheet, here we have the instruction manual, and here we have the spare parts, including the brick separator. So, wrapping things up here, what are my final thoughts on this set? Well, I don't think it's worth $80. If you can find it for a cheaper price, maybe even $50, I'd say go for it. It's not worth the full $80. If you can find it like used for a pretty reasonable price, I'd say grab it. Do I think it has good play value? I mean, sure, for a younger kid playing with this set, I'm sure they're going to have a blast. From a collector's standpoint, there are better Ninjago mechs out there, but is this mech truly awful? Not necessarily. It does have some good things going for it, but there's just a lot of really weird decisions that are holding this set back from being perfect, in my opinion. And a lot of these decisions make the entire set rather awkward to build and pose and display. So it's not the best thing out there. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that this is probably one of the weakest Ninjago mechs, at least in terms of a large scale Ninjago mech that we've seen in quite a while. But is it necessarily all bad? No, it's more or less just a mixed bag. And if you're into that sort of thing, thing i'd say check out this set if you have plans on maybe improving it i'd say go for it um but as it stands this is just an awkward middle of the road mech it's not really worth the full asking price but if you can find it on sale i'd say go for it why not so with that being said guys that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here thank you so much for watching leave all your thoughts and comments down below what do you think about this set do you like this set do you not like this set why or why not leave all your thoughts down below and hopefully you enjoyed today's video if you guys enjoyed this one feel free to like and subscribe do all that fun stuff and i will talk to you guys again very very soon peace